In today's video, I'm going to explain the Twisty Bridges biome. Anyway, if you just get right into it. This time, we're actually going to start with the indigenous life forms. It's going to be backwards today as we're starting with the flora. With the most iconic flora of this biome being the Coral Bridge, which the biome is literally named after the Twisty Bridges. They are a bunch of rapidly growing polyps, which when they touch something, they grow very fast. They also have barnacles beneath them. On the side of the twisty bridges, you can find crescent moon coral. While most coral grow on the ground, they grow vertically. They have a tiny red stem which pulls in microorganisms for nutrients and nourishment. You can also find the oxygen plant which, like the name suggests, can give you oxygen and are amazing in a pinch. And they have a symbiotic relationship with most likely pinacarids, even though pinacarids aren't found here. And they also have a symbiotic relationship with the penglings. Let me explain. You know the small herbivores in the game that want to eat these plants? Well, because penguins and pinacarids absolutely need air, so they can't spend all their time hunting in the water, the oxygen plant provides them at least a couple more minutes of hunting. So in return, whichever creature, either the pengling or the pinacarid, will defend it from herbivores. Pretty damn genius if you ask me. Not to mention the animals they eat are gonna be herbivores. So they get two things while the oxygen plant only gets one. So it's a bigger benefit for the pinacarids and pangolings. But the oxygen plant gets all it needs. The pink narrow leaf loves coral bridges and are usually found in small clusters. They are probably related to seagrass. Here is also another home of the ribbon plant, which may be related to the acid mushrooms considering they're also used to make batteries. Shelf coral, kind of like crescent coral, grow vertically along rocky ledges. They are a type of stony coral with exoskeletons. They grow upwards and outwards in thinner layers. You can also find the rare pair of violet bayou here. Here is a home to the twisted mandrake. They grow in temperate coral zones. They photosynthesize and they have a bulbous structure underneath which doesn't really like the sun. So but it's kind of like shelves. It provides shade to that area. The carnivores you can find here are the brute shark. They have very low intelligence and are probably not an actual type of shark. Its streamlined body can get into small spaces. They use their yellow and turquoise coloration to camouflage and they are slow moving and they attack from above. Here is also the main home to the Arctic Ray. They are a fast moving ray species on planet 4546b and like low temperate environments. They can quickly change their direction and they are exclusively herbivores, unlike some that sometimes have a snack every once in a while. For every herbivore here, they are nothing new. They all came back from Subnautica 1 and they are one of the most iconic ones. Meet the Arctic Peeper who got a redesign. They camouflage against the ice and they are very fast. They are quite intelligent and are like the common peeper, except evolved for icy environments. And for some reason, the PDA says this, researcher notes, don't like the auto-generated name, suggest ice clops. No. Seriously, who came up with that? Well, 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 look who's back from the first game, the bladderfish. And with no makeover this time. Well, a semi one for deeper environments, but still. They have open-ended vascular tubing and they have a semi-permeable bladder. They are immobile at night and they are largely oblivious. Another returner from the first game, meet the hoopfish, who did not get anything maked over. Their purple and green color is for camouflage. They usually move in school schools and they have their antenna. And instead of swimming, they use their hoop-like body to move through the water kind of like a boat sail. They are also a distant relative to the bladderfish. You can also find table coral here and in bunches. 
but only really found in the caves. You can find Jelena and limestone outcrops here. You can find many sea truck fragments here, along with a kind of research base with a claw, which is right next to an alien base, which I'll get into in a second, and a small place for breathing, which has a data box near it, and it has been broken open. It also has a habitat builder and water inside of it meaning that this is a pretty good place to get the habitat builder. You can also find a couple of exterior grow beds here, which have the Trinity Barnacle in them. By the way, the Trinity Barnacle is usually found in sea vents, but has taken a liking to this place. You can also find many PDAs here, including the sea truck logs. You can find alien robots and ion cubes in the alien base. The base is also broken down and is running out of power, which is why the architect lights leading to it are flashing up and down, or on and off, what am I saying? This is where you'll also find the ginormous cube where Alan is stored. And this is where your journey begins with the alien architecture on Planet 45. 46b in the arctic region but wait isn't there still the deep twisty bridges or do you think i was going to do a different video on that well jokes on you we are doing the deep twisty bridges now you can find spiky traps here which if my lily pad theory is correct this is going to be the only place you can find them and with endangered numbers like that they probably won't last. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you're either new or didn't watch the entire lily pad video. Anyways, they are highly dangerous and will grab you if you get too close. They blend in like a coral or an enemy, so small spine fish will feel safe around them. And then they grab them and eat them. But we still have to meet the apex predator of this biome, meet the squid shark. The smallest leviathan class predator and it's not even a leviathan. I've said this many times, so I'll just say it again. They have jet propulsion with terrifying bursts of speed. They have an internal jaw, which I think has nine ellipses, And they have two blue electrified tentacles, which is how they get their name, squid shark. Speaking of the spine fish I said earlier, welcome the spine fish. They remain in schools and use their gray coloration to be translucent instead of camouflaging. So they are invisible to predators. They also move in school and are heavily related to the hoopfish. They are just their deep sea variant. Here in the exploitable flora category, you can find the gel sack, which grows all over the twisty bridges and the deeper parts. Here you can find the broken mandrake. They are a bioluminescent plant and roots itself in deep coral zones, sometimes even being found on the deep twisty bridges or the deep coral bridges. While mandrakes photosynthesize, we don't exactly know how they survive, but genetically, they have adapted quite well to their permanent dark conditions. Here you can also find massive hydrothermal vents. These hydrothermal vents are enough to melt lead. They have their own ecosystem and they are probably home to spinefish. Now, I would like to say something. The deep twisty bridges isn't its own biome. It's actually just a massive deep trench in the ocean. The cave system with the twisty bridges is actually a biome. Twisty bridges is basically just a bunch of trenches all together or a massive crack in the ocean. But since the coral bridges are here, they technically make it a biome even though they're just there. You know what? Now that I think about it, I think maybe the twisty bridges are pushing the trenches out more, making the trench even bigger and bigger. And if that keeps up, it may invade other biomes and destroy their ecosystems, especially the seaweed. The seaweed is the kelp force what am i saying anyways another thing i forgot to say is that they're filled with quartz so if i caught the twisty bridges the deep twisty bridges a couple of times or vice versa sorry about that but uh what to worry okay guys i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you later okay peace